Hi, I'm Rachel Tessman from StampYourArtOut.com, and today I'd like to share with you some outside-the-box ideas that I created using the contents of the November 2018 Paper Pumpkin Kit from Stampin' Up! titled, To You and Yours. This kit came straight to my mailbox and contained all the papers, envelopes, adhesives, die cuts, twine, and sequins that I needed to make five of each of these beautiful holiday cards. In fact, this mini publication with photos, written directions, tips, details, and a link to a how-to video was included to help guide me in assembling. I also received this stamp set, which is well loved, <laughs> and a mini ink pad, both of which I'll be able to use over and over again even after the consumables from this kit are used up. All I need to make my 10 cards is my clear block to mount and use my stamps, and this one came free with my first kit, and my scissors. Paper pumpkin kits are only $19.95 plus tax per month in the U.S. Shipping is included. You control which months you get your kits, and there's no commitment or obligation. They come from Stampin' Up! so the colors, images, and supplies coordinate with many other Stampin' Up! products. I'll be using some of these coordinating products as I share my unique projects. You can find those items listed below and linked to my online store. You can also look below for links to learning more about paper pumpkin kits, starting your subscription through me so I can spoil you with exclusive ideas, gifts, and prizes, and joining my Paper Pumpkin fan club on Facebook where you'll see even more alternate project ideas shared daily. If you're watching my video on YouTube, click on the link below that will lead you to my website where I've shared close-up photos of what I'll be showing you today. I'm excited to create with you, so let's get started. I decided that I would try my hand at a little mini album. So I took out a fifth of the kit contents, separated those out so that I could make a mini album with that. That way, if you want to, instead of making cards with this kit, you can create five little mini albums to give as gifts. So below me are approximately one-fifth of the kit supplies, the, the supplies that made up these cards here. So again, you can make five albums from one kit by pulling out the two card bases, the, um, one of each of the plaid pieces, the wooden elements, the circle sticker and the rectangular sticker, um, some of the branch pieces, the two labels, the sequins, um, the vellum circle and the vellum strip, and some of the twine. I'm using just a little bit less than um, a fifth of the twine and a little bit less than a fifth of the branches so you can use those on other projects later on. But let's go ahead and show you what the finished album looks like. I, nip, I typically don't do that. I typically don't show the finished project first, but I want you to see how adorable this is. So this is the mini album and it has pockets on the outside. So here's a pocket right here and you could store like a special photo in there or you can leave it blank, it doesn't matter. And on the back side you can also put another photo. So the black cardstock just re represents a couple different photos. And then when you open up the Merry Christmas to You, uh, you and Yours album, then on the inside, the first pages, you see um, the photo mats here and here. And this is you know open so that you can slip your photo in there. And then you have a couple non-decorated pages turn it to the middle and you have um, some of the crumb cake background with some decoration on it again and then the non-decorated pages and then the back. So I'm going to walk you through creating this whole album. Here we go. Here are just a few extra supplies that you'll need. You'll need the paper snips and I like to assign one of mine to ribbon so that when I cut ribbon it doesn't uh, it cuts clean. Paper dulls scissors, so I have a paper scissors and a ribbon scissors. I also want to use my uh, cutter, my trimmer with the cutting blade. I have an eighth inch hole punch and then I'm going to use a couple sheets of the early espresso cardstock. Now in addition to those items, I also like to use some special adhesives. My snail adhesive is fast and easy. So I'm going to be using snail rather than just the glue dots in the kit. I'm also going to use the Tombow liquid glue with a sponge and a silicone mat to help add the branch pieces. Again, optional, but very f makes it easier. And then um, the take your pick tool, awesome for picking up little glue dots when you need to. I may or may not use that. 
Here is the embossing buddy, and the embossing buddy is going to be great for removing stickiness off of the back of stickers. Um, that's kind of a necessary thing. And then I'll also be using my Cherry Cobbler ink pad and ergonomic block. These are in the online store. You don't need to add those in because your kit comes with that mini ink pad color and you also have your clear block from your first kit. But for ease and quickness, I love to use these instead. So the first thing that we need to do is cut some of our cardstock down. So let's move this out of the way and I'm going to give you some measurements now. These are for your photo mats. So you're going to be using your Early Espresso cardstock to make your photo mats. So we need two strips that are three and three quarters by five inches. So you're going to put your paper in with the short side at the top to three and three quarter inches and you're going to slice from top to bottom or bottom to top. You'll need this piece and you'll need one more and I'm going to actually cut that from my second sheet. So three and three quarters by five. So let's leave those right there for now. Let's turn these two skinnier pieces the other direction and cut them each at five inches. This is just to discard. From one of these wider pieces, we're going to trim that down to four and a half inches. It is at four and three quarter inches right now, but we want to trim it a little bit skinnier, so four and a half. And after you have that measurement done, you're going to rotate it and you're going to cut at three inches twice. So two pieces that are four and a half by three. And then we need another piece that is four and a half by three and a quarter. You can set that aside, you don't need that. For this last remaining wide piece, which is four and three quarter inches wide, we're actually going to turn it this way and trim at three and three, I'm sorry, three and a quarter, and again at three, uh, two and three eighths, which is one of the marks before the two and a half. Let's zoom in here so you can see. So we're going to trim right here at two and three-eighths. We're going to keep that for just a minute, that extra piece, and these two pieces are going to get cut in half. So the one that is three and a quarter is going to get cut in half, and this one here that is three and three, I'm sorry, two and three-eighths is going to get cut in half. And to cut them in half, you're going to cut them at two and three-eighths, okay? So two and three-eighths is that magic number. <laughs> So these two pieces end up being perfect little squares. And then the last thing that you'll need from this extra sheet here is a piece that is three inches by two and a half. So we'll just cut it to two and a, two and a half here. You can save this for something else. And we'll cut this at three. Now you have all your little photo mats ready to go. And now we're going to assemble the base of our album. I've cleaned the ink off my thumb. Oh, I hate having messy fingers. And we're going to connect these two envelopes together like this. So you notice I just slipped one inside the other. The other one is showing on the back side like that. And they are going to fold this way, which is opposite of how most envelopes fold. So you just want to make sure that your crease is in there and you slip them together. You don't need to put any adhesive on the inside flap unless you want to, but the outside one needs to have some adhesive in there. So we're going to go ahead and flip this back like that, and we're just going to take our snail adhesive or glue dots from the kit. You want to give this a, a lick, you certainly can do that. And then you can come in with your snail adhesive and do the remaining areas and make sure it folds backwards onto itself like that. <clears throat> okay, so on my, um, on my sample album, this is the front of the album. I know it's not as pretty because you can see part of the vanilla part of the flap, but we're going to cover that up with the label anyways. And here, I'll give you a peek here. So you can see this side, you can't see any of the vanilla, and under here, you could if you were to lift up that little label piece. So we're going to make this easier 
to put things into by just folding that extra little flap down like that. That's going to make it easier to insert photos where you don't have this catching on it. So we're just folding that down. You can certainly glue that if you'd like to. We're going to bring in a couple cards here. These are the card bases. And the card bases for our album are going to actually fold. Let's see, I want to make sure I've got it the right way. One's going to fold inward like this, and one's going to fold outward like that. We're going to connect them together on the inside here. So now that you've got them placed together the right way, like that, you're going to bring the crease marks together and center them. And then we're going to take that eighth inch hole punch and we're going to punch into the middle. So you're just going to guide it like this and you're going to punch. And you can make little marks if you want to. Um, you can totally make like little pencil marks where you want them to be, do a little measuring. What I did is I used this edge here of the crumb cake cards and I lined it up with a mark that's already on my um, hole punch, which is kind of like where the metal stops. And so I just slid it in here like that. And then I positioned it to make sure I can see where that metal mark is. And I punched. If it's hard to punch through three layers, and actually four because you've got two envelopes overlapping each other, if it's hard to do that all at once, you can take and punch into one like this. And then you can take and layer that onto your other card, make a little mark, and then punch that one separately. After you've made the mark, you punch that separately. And then do the same thing here. Make a little mark and punch that one separately. Um, but just for quickness, I'm going to go ahead and reline these back up. And give that a punch. Okay, we've got that ready to go. Now we're going to take our two feet of ribbon. So yes, you only need two feet of this. We're just going to angle, angle cut it a little bit more here. And we're going to weave that from the front to the back. This is gross, but I, off camera I gave it a little bit of a, a lick, so it's a little pointier. <laughs> and then once you have it woven through like that, you can take and adjust it where you want on the front side and tie your ribbon into a bow. And this will be the binding for your album. And now we're going to bring in our silicone mat and our green glue, which is what we nickname this. This is our multi-purpose liquid glue. And we're going to squeeze a little bit of that into the corner of our silicone mat. Grab one of our branches and flip it over and our sponge. And you're going to pounce up and down to pick up that glue and kind of evenly distribute it on the back side or the underside of your sponge. This is a sponge that I, a piece that I cut from a circular sponge. So they come in three large circles and I just cut them into tiny wedges so that a little goes a long way. And we're going to go ahead and add a little bit of adhesive to the back side, keeping your your laser cut little branch in one place while you pounce the 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 um, glue on. You don't want that to move. And let's just kind of add this here. Let's position where our, our um, title of our album is going to go and then we can kind of tuck that underneath so it's sticking out right about there. And then let's do a couple more pieces here. This time when I do this one I want to move it over because this area has glue on it already and I don't want any more glue on the front of this. I just want it on the back so I have to Scoot it over to one side. So now I'm going to tap out the excess glue and put this off to the side 
so I can clean that up later or use it later. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and stamp the title piece for our album. We have our ink ready. When you put your stamps onto your blocks, you'll want to put them on at sort of an angle. You don't want them straight on, otherwise you're using the edges of your blocks. You may use the edges of your blocks to line things up and, and you don't want to be doing that. You want to be using the actual image. So ink up your stamp and stamp it down onto your label. And now we're going to put this on with dimensionals. By the way, if you're new to stamping and you've never put photopolymer stamps onto a clear block so you can use them, I recommend that you actually put them on your table like that so that they're, they're lying the straight way and then you pick them up with your clear block. That way you'll have your image straight. When you put it on like this, you can sometimes curve your stamp accidentally and then um, that kind of messes things up. I love that photopolymer stamps can be curved but um, I kind of want it to be in its natural straight state for my stamping. So there we go. Okay, to put the dimensionals on, I want them to sort of reinforce this flap that I folded over. So I'm going to go ahead and add them along the edge of my envelope here and here. And again, kind of eyeball where that label piece is going to go. And I think I need another one about here. and right about here. And then, making sure that they get covered up, then I think I want one down here as well. So it's best to kind of put them along here instead of along the back side of this because you don't want any dimensionals that are going to get stuck down into the center area. That would prevent you from being able to add your photos to your album afterwards. So this here can see you can add some photos or memorabilia. Sorry, trying to get that little bow out of the way. And you can do that if you don't have any stickiness there. If you don't care about having a pocket, feel free to go ahead and just slap this down straight on there. Peel off the backings carefully. The dimensionals can lose some of um, that little lining of adhesive if you peel up too much. So be careful on that. And then we'll just set this right down on here. Using the lines on your plaid designer paper envelope lining as a guide. And then the last steps for this is to add a few sequins. Okay, now we can go ahead and decorate the inside pages of our album. Fun, 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 fun. Okay, so let's start with our circle. Again, this circle, if you saw my previous video for this kit where I quadrupled the cards in the kit, I suggested removing this backing and it just makes it easier to see where your circle is on the sticker. So we're gonna do that and then we're gonna pull out our trimmer and we're gonna cut this circle in half. Now you can use the guides um, I'm sorry, the, the outside edge of the sticker as a guide. It's approximately three and a quarter inches, and you don't have to have them exactly in half, these little circle pieces, um, but three and a quarter divided in half is one and five eighths. So you could do it that way if you wish, or um, you can just kind of eyeball it. <laughs> so let's go ahead and slice that into two pieces like that. We want to have one going one way and one going the other way. And for one of them, we're going to have the words um, that it's the most wonderful time of the year stamped on it. So that one fits on here a little bit better than it fits on here. So we're going to do that one on the one where the circle part is downward. And on the other one, we're going to stamp this sentiment. Here's to a Christmas filled with love, laughter, and all you wish for and that one will get stamped here. And then we want to also stamp Merry and Bright onto this little strip here. I forgot one little star stamp 
that I want to put down here. And when I opened up this stamp pad, I realized why my fingers were messy before. Because <laughs> you can pick up ink and yeah. So if it's on there, look at that. Yeah, nice and fun. Now I have inked up thumbs again. <laughs> so since we're on the topic of cleaning, I thought I would just introduce you to stamp and Mist and the stamp and Scrub. Um, this is one of the ways that we clean our stamps. Um, the stamp cleaner system has been around for years and years. We'll just wipe our thumb right in there. <laughs> so you can take all your stamps and after you're done using them, you can clean them off. And you'll notice with photopolymer, you can still see that pink from the red ink. Photopolymer is a very porous type of stamp and it will stain and that's okay. It doesn't mean that you can't use it anymore. But you do want to clean them as good as you can because that will help them to last longer. So I just clean on one side and dry on the other side. We also have another cleaning system called the chamois. Let me grab that. Now the chamois is like a real dense sponge that um, expands when you add water. So these pieces are completely dry and this piece I just re-wet. You can see it stains and that's okay. It doesn't mean that it's dirty. It, it'll still clean your stamps. Um, these this chamois I cut into four pieces because that way I can take just one with me. It's portable. When I'm using the, the tool called the Stamparatus, it's easy to just clean off a stamp as I go. So yes, you can use the chamois to clean off your stamps also if that's what you prefer. So that's another way of cleaning. And then you can just peel off the backing again on the back of your stamp set. You can peel your stamp images off their blocks, add them back where they need to go in your set. And then the last step is to clean your blocks. And my favorite way and my quickest way of cleaning my blocks is with rubbing alcohol. So let me show you how I do that. I just take one of these little swabs or a cotton ball that's got rubbing alcohol on it and I grab my block and I wipe on one side, I flip it over and I wipe on the other side and then I let it sit upright to dry. It's a very quick, easy way to do it, rather than trying to fill the sink with soap and water and washing them that way. Do not clean your stamps with the rubbing alcohol, though. It's a very rough cleaner. You don't want to be using your alcohol in there. Just stamp and mist or water. Now that these are dry, I can set them aside. I can set my stamps aside and we're ready to keep going. Let's take our plaid pieces now and flip them over. We're going to put those on directly next. I'm just going to use straight snail adhesive or the glue dots that come in your kit. And we will add this one to this piece here. We'll just center it right there. And the other one to this piece. And it's covering up that flap that way of that envelope. We don't want to see that. Let's start to embellish the other pages. The first set of pages, we want to put our Here's to a Christmas filled with love, laughter, and all that you wish for. So we're going to take that sticker, we're going to peel off the backing, we're going to bring in the embossing buddy, and we're going to pounce. And pouncing releases a powder that is in there. The embossing buddy was made to help Eliminate fingerprints on cardstock so that when you do stamping and embossing, you don't have any um, oils from your fingers collecting that embossing powder. So here we have, here's to a Christmas, and then we'll flip that over. We'll take our dimensionals and we can just run them along the bottom here. The skinnier the dimensionals, the more room you have for larger pictures. And then we'll flip this over. And we want to put it down in here, but before we do that, I'm going to add a little branch. So, with our glue that we just used, and the adhesive that's already on the back of the dimensionals, we're going to stick this little guy down. And we want to be able to have a picture slip under there. 
So we don't want to put adhesive all the way up the branch. We just really want to have it right along there. I think I put too much on. That's okay. <laughs> so we want that to position right about there. So we're going to lay that down, tack it down, and then this can go over the top of it like that. And we have the ability to still insert a photo behind those things. Okay? That's a large photo. All right, we're going to do that to the other side. So let's flip it this way and do the same thing with this piece. And then for this rectangular wooden sticker, I peeled off the outside edges so we can see how big it is. It is one and a quarter inches wide. We're going to trim off a half an inch. So let's make sure that holds in place as we set that down. Trim off a half an inch. We can use that for some other project. We just wanted this a little bit thinner. We're going to go ahead and use our paper snips to trim in on each end. So you just go from corner to the center and then corner to that same center mark. Flip it around, do the same thing to the other side. Corner to center, corner to center. And now we have this fun little banner. We're going to add this to our vellum circle. So we're going to put a little adhesive along the back side and add that here. And then we're going to layer this piece behind it so that it shows through and is pretty centered along that back banner. So you can see that there. So let's go ahead and add some more adhesive directly behind where that banner is touching the vellum. You don't want to put any adhesive outside of it or it's going to be exposed when you look at the front. Now as we stick this down, I don't want to press this completely down yet. I'm going to stick some little branches in there. So this branch piece can go right in like this. And this branch piece can go right in like that. And I think I want to add a little bit more adhesive back there to make sure it really bonds to the, the wooden piece there. There we go. Okay, then the last step is to take our paper snips and to come in and trim right along here because we're going to position that down here where it um, gives us some room to put a photo back there. So you'll just now take and put some adhesive along here and add that really close to where the crease is of your, here we're going to set it might have to off-center that a little bit. That's okay. So that's going to go right about there and tack down and then we'll be able to slip a photo mat and a photo behind that. Okay, now let's go ahead and add some photo mats. The last one that we cut that was two and a half by three is going to be inserted right in here. So you would just make your photo slightly smaller than that or make it the same size and just replace these photo mats with your photos. Another size that we just cut, actually two sizes, these are the ones that were 2 and 3 eighths inches wide. So we're going to put those on next. We might as well just work our way backwards through our pile, right? So these are going to be placed onto our plaid areas. So we'll flip them over and put some adhesive on the back. And we'll position this one like that. And in the back side of the album, we'll do it the opposite way. Like that. Then we had one piece that was four and a half by three and a quarter inches tall. That one's going to go on the inside here. And the two skinnier ones that were also four and a half inches wide that aren't quite as tall, those are going to go on the outside areas. 
So on this page, which will slip down right in here, and on this one, which will slip right up into this spot. And then the remaining photo mats will go on the white pages. The last step is to add our sequins for the inside pieces, inside pages. So we're going to take a large and a small and pair them up. Put the large there, the small here, and then the back will get a large in the branch area and a small off to the side away from the branches. And again, if you wanted to put photos in these pockets, you certainly could. Or you can just leave them as is as a decoration. So here are two finished albums now. They were quite fun to make. And again, I only used a fifth of the kit supplies for each album. So you could get five albums from each of those kits. <laughs> One more little tip before I let you go is if you use packing tape, packaging tape, and you lay that onto your dried glue on your silicone pad, it will clean it up. It will remove all of it. Now that's still wet, but I'm going to try to get some of it up. So you can see it cleans off your silicone mat just by taking and lifting it up with glue. So let it dry and then you just peel it up. Pretty awesome. Those are fun mats. <laughs> now that you've watched my video, I hope that you can see that there's so much more to these kits than meets the eye. With just a few extra supplies and some imagination, you can go beyond and make so much more with these super affordable kits. In fact, in my previous video that I did with the contents of the kit, I took and used those same set of supplies and I made eight cards instead of just two. And so if you wanted to, you could watch that video and you could create 40 cards with one kit, or you could create 32 cards and an album with the kit, or two albums and 24 cards. Um, but yes, I hope that you got some inspiration from what I shared. Thank you for watching. It builds creativity to think outside the box. Be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel so that you can catch more Paper Pumpkin videos that I've shared using past kits and more that I'll share with future kits. Also, be sure to visit my website at stampyourartout.com so that you can view close-up photos of this album, see photos of other Paper Pumpkin kit ideas in future and past posts, and see many other great ideas that I've shared using Stampin' Up! products. You'll find these links in my description below. Oh, and to get spoiled with extra goodies, like gifts, prizes, and extra exclusive Paper Pumpkin ideas, get your subscription started with me as your demonstrator. I hope you enjoyed this video tutorial. Now I'd like you all to go and stamp your art out. Bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs>